my name is Abby, I am the Curly Haired Keeper, and today we are going to be talking about snake behaviors and retic personalities. Quick caveat, I am not an animal behaviorist or an expert in this field by any means. Uh, it's just something that I love. I spend a lot of time down here with my animals. I spend a lot of time interacting with my animals. So I just wanted to talk about kind of some things that I noticed, some things, some just anecdotal observations that I see on a day-to-day -day basis interacting with my animals. I'm not an expert. If you want expert advice, consult an expert. That would not be me. I currently have six retics in my care right now. Me being far too amused with my editing prowess, I actually have no idea what I'm doing. I just want to walk you through kind of behavioral nuances and personality differences between the six of them, and yeah, just kind of a little bit of fun, chill, cozy little snake talk. The first animal I want to chit chat about is April. So April is a, another breeder loan animal that we have from Garrett Hartle. She is a high percentage coyote. Um, she's around four years old. She is one of the shyer animals in our care. She's taken a little bit longer to settle in. She's a little bit more um, what would commonly be known as flighty. However, I have found that when dealing with animals like April, kind of giving her a little bit more time and space to process information. So when I go in to open up her enclosure for cleanings and she wants to poke her little nose out, instead of just reaching in and pulling her out with a hook, kind of letting her instead process the information, encouraging her to come out on her own and then turning off any food response, obviously with a hook or some sort of item that isn't doesn't have a, um, a heat sensor, turning food response off in that manner and then going in and taking her out with my hands works really well with her. April has actually come a really long way since she's been in our care. She, when we first got her, she was a, a crazy little buckaroo. Whenever we would make contact with her, either with our hands or the hook, she would buck like crazy. With her, it was almost like she was just over stimulated. I found that letting her process through information. So opening up her enclosure enclosure door, letting her kind of come part way out and then placing my hand on her. And even if she did buck, just kind of keeping that steady hand and not moving away would allow her to recognize that things were safe and she would very quickly calm down and stop bucking and allow for a much calmer interaction. She has since stopped bucking for the most part. Sometimes she'll still buck when I first go in to get her out, but I think she's now learned that if she comes out on her own, then like it's that's like it. There's generally no bucking. Just is now a very calm, curious girl. Now let's move over to Centauri. Centauri is just over a year old. She is a platinum annery tiger female. She is a little more chill. I wouldn't necessarily call her shy. She's generally out basking most of the time. She will kind of come towards you if you open the door, mostly because I think she wants to check out and see if you have any food, but her food drive is very easy to turn off. Um, I usually either take the hand spray bottle or a roll of paper towels or sometimes a hook and just kind of gently kind of boop her on the nose with it. Um, anything without a heat signature really will suffice. And that immediately turns off her food response. And then she, you can pick her up and do whatever you need to with her. 
At nighttime, she will generally be at her glass, and if you open it up, she will come out most of the times on her own for a little bit of interaction time. She doesn't generally stay out for very long before she's ready to go back in, but yeah, she's, she's awesome. She's very sweet, very chill. She's growing like a weed, so she will need an upgrade soon. But yeah, that's Centauri. And then let's talk about our other girl. So Chahaya is our orange glow female. She is probably our shyest retic. She's also our smallest retic that we have. She is also just over a year old. She tends to hide underneath her shelf most of the time. She will come out to kind of explore at nighttime. However, I think that's partly my fault because she's a visual albino. I actually have her UVB plugged in on a daisy chain to her LED light and I need to fix that because that simply means her UVB is on all of the time. And I think that's preventing her from wanting to come out during the day because visual albinos can be more sensitive to UVB. They can literally get a sunburn. You can't see it very well, but I turned off her lights and just moments after the lights went out, look at her. Hi, sweetie. Turn that UVB off at certain points throughout the day so they can come out and just fully let themselves hang out in all their glory if they want to. She's also very sweet. She has, again, that very typical strong retic food drive. It's very easy to turn off. Um, once I turn it off, because she tends to like to hide kind of deep underneath that shelf, uh, I do feel comfortable with her reaching underneath the shelf with my hands and just pulling her out when I want to get her out. Um, I have been, since I'm home more now, being more diligent of working with both of these girls who are more shy animals, um, working with them more consistently to get them more handling time. So yeah, that's Shahaya. And the last female retic in our care is another breeder loan animal. That one is, uh, should be familiar to everyone if you follow this channel for any amount of time and that is Stella. She is our biggest girl, 12 feet long. Um, she's the one that's getting our big upgrade that's coming up. And she is a complete doll. She is very docile. Now with Stella, she does have a food drive just like any retic. So I do always, when I go in to clean her, which is just about daily because <laughs> she likes to pee in her enclosure basically every day. So I do take the hook and I turn any potential food drive off simply by gently kind of petting her on top of the head with the hook. And you can kind of see they will respond to that connection of the hook on top of their head by changing the position or changing their behavior slightly, which you can see here in this video clip. But yeah, once I do that and I know that that food drive is off, you can pretty much do anything with Stella. So I can go in, take her out, interact with her. Um, some days she feels like interacting more than others. Some days she just wants to go hide away while I'm cleaning her. Some days she wants to explore and interact. So I kind of leave that up to them. But yeah, she's a big, you know, 12 feet of articulated puppy dog. She's she's a sweetheart. And then we have Shy. Shy is just over a year old. He is our Motley Tiger Slayer boy. Um, he's super awesome. He was super shy. He was actually what I would have considered our shyest free tick up until a couple months ago and some sort of light switch <laughs> shifted with him and he suddenly, literally overnight got very social, was at his glass most of the time and now most days, if he's at his glass and you open it up, he comes right out and just is ready to interact with you. Uh, he also has a food drive. However, if he's at his glass and is wanting to like come out, Generally, there's no food drive in 
involved with that. He's generally just wanting to come out for additional enrichment time. So take from that what you will. Um, it, it could be any number of reasons that he's at his door, but it seems like wanting food is not one of them because generally when he's at his window or at his, his sliding glass doors like that, he doesn't come out hot. So yeah, that's Mr. Shy. And then last but not least, there is Aries. And Aries, again, if you are not new to this channel, you've probably seen Aries, um, especially if you are active at all on the Instagram page. Aries is Mr. Personality. He is just over two years old. Um, he is my most interactive and social retic at this point. He is a complete goof and he is one of those retics that I usually have to preface, don't do this with your animal when I'm interacting with him because he's one of those animals that I work with him a lot and I generally don't use a hook with him. Now he is right between six and seven feet long. So, you know, you, you have to kind of analyze your own risk when working with these animals. With him, I get him out and interact with him almost every single day unless he's in shed. He does not like to be interacted with when he is in shed. So I respect his behavioral boundaries when he wants that space. When he does want out, he lets me know. So I generally just unlock his door, open it up, and he comes right out. Uh, he's not head shy, he's not at all shy in any sense of the word, and he just seems to want to be out and exploring and interacting with anyone and anything. So he's a, he's a, he's a cool dude. Now this is not necessarily unusual for a reticulated python. I know several other keepers that have animals with similar behaviors as Aries. Retics are super cool, very interactive snakes, and it can seem intimidating if you're not used to this kind of behavior from a snake. If you've never kept a snake before and a retic is your first one, this can be a little like, oh my gosh, what is happening? But with him, the reason he is coming out of his enclosure on his own is because he wants to explore. It's not because he's hungry. It's not because he wants to bite you. He just is curious. He wants to come out and say hello. He does the same thing when he does community outreach programs with me. That's Aries. Um, he is right around, he's just over two years old. So he is, you know, sexually mature for the most part. And we do have two adult females here. So I have been keeping a close eye on his behavior. Um, the only, you know, kind of sexually mature behavior that he has shown is he has arched, um, but only on me. <laughs> so he hasn't shown any sort of like more dominant male behavior yet, but it is something to keep an eye on if you do keep both males and females, especially close proximity to each other and they are sexually mature animals, so. And that leads us to the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is things that I take into consideration when looking at behaviors and interacting with my animals. So one question that I'm always asking myself is what could be driving their behavior? So, we just talked about sexual maturity and potential sexual behaviors. Another thing to think about is like Stella and April have been on a fast for the last month. So they haven't had a meal in I think just over a month. So they are hungry. Whenever I get them out to clean them or interact with them, I always take that into consideration. Um, I, that's with all of my animals. Um, retics in particular are highly food motivated. So even with um, Shy in particular and Centauri too, to some extent, if I've just 
fed them and it's a day or two later, if I go into their enclosure, they are immediately on high alert to see if there is food involved because that means they're smart animals. The last time I went into their enclosure, food was involved. So they are remembering that and looking to see if food is coming back into their enclosure. So that's just something to keep in mind. Again, it's very easy to turn that behavior off and shift them into that kind of curious thinking behavior. But again, just something I'm constantly asking myself. Another thing is those behavioral shifts. So if I come downstairs and all the animals are like acting different than they normally are, I'll check the weather. Sometimes if there's a big storm coming, all of the animals will all of a sudden wake up and be super active all at the same time, which is unusual. Um, sometimes big barometric pressure shifts can spark that behavioral change. The other thing to look out for is has anything changed in their enclosure or their parameters. So like with Aries, we just took out all of his bioactive medium and kind of shifted things around with his plants. And that could be part of why he has had zero chill for the last 48 hours since he shed, um, because he's looking for kind of his, his stuff that was in there before and he's checking out all of those changes. Um, temperature changes, humidity changes, things like that. I do keep all of my retics on uh, radiant heat panels and sometimes if they do, ex they like to explore, they like to climb, and sometimes they will unplug those. So I do do a regular check and make sure all of those radiant heat pa panels are still plugged in. So just double checking things like that if you see those behavioral changes. And one of the other things is if you see a drastic change, are they injured or sick? Regular vet checkups are always helpful to check for this. Um, if you're worried about a specific behavioral shift going in to you know, check the professional, um, if you're concerned about any sort of potential sickness or injury is always a good idea. Um, when I first got Aries, who was my first retic, he sneezes. <laughs> um, retic sneeze, I didn't know that. And they, he tends to sneeze when he is getting ready to go into shed or when he is actually shedding. And it's just because they get like the dry scales up into their nasal passages and then he's fine after he sheds and then he starts sneezing again um, when he goes back into shed. So that's something to keep in mind. Again, there could be many other factors that would cause a snake to sneeze. So if you're ever concerned about a behavior, consult a professional. I took Aries to several different vets when he was sneezing because I was paranoid and have a little bit of OCD and tend to overthink everything. So better to know than not know and continue to stress about it. And there are obviously any number of additional behaviors that could be driving certain things that your or certain ways that your animals are acting. So yeah, just continue to be curious and ask yourself those questions while you're interacting with your animals. And that's all I got. Um, I wanted it to be retic focused for this video. I'll talk about other species in another video. Um, again, I am no expert. This is specifically focused on the animals that are in my care, but I just wanted to have a nice little change of pace, cozy little chit chat, and talk about something that I love, which is animal behavior and interacting with my retics. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was maybe a little bit informational, especially if you were considering getting a reticulated python. Um, and yeah. I will catch you next week. Bye. I am slightly overwhelmed. It's fine. It's like that cartoon with the dog in the coffee shop. Dude, please don't fall. Aries has zero chill right now. Now do it. Don't fall, dude. Just one of those days. Not feeling my hair, not feeling my makeup. I am feeling coffee, though.